I'm not crying, you're crying. I'm not crying. <laughs> you're definitely crying. Let's start Final Fantasy. You catch up, she waited first. There is a matter I wish to raise with you before we enter. What is it, Alfie? What could it be? Is it about your dad? We are here to listen and to learn. But if the forum's plans are more or less what I expect, then I should like to make a proposal that will serve our ends. Hey, Raven. Thanks for, thanks for liking our stuff. Hey. Hey, Frank, that was not a creepy. By your leave, of course. <laughs> hey. <laughs> what are you trying to do? Hey, Raven. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't trying to sound that creepy. <laughs> I don't see why not. Your words and wits have gotten us this far. Agreed. I will present our queries so that you may consider the most advantageous way to advance your proposal without distraction. Thank you, everyone. If I may have your attention, the ad hoc session will now commence. The purpose of today's assembly is to brief the Scions of the Seventh Dawn at their request on the Great Exodus. You may enter. Why does he look like that? <laughs> it's our leader, Alfie. Took over for Mindy. Yeah, we're cool. On behalf of the Forum, I commend your heroic actions on the Magna Glacius. We shall not soon forget your service to us and the people of Radzadhan. The Satrap, whom we have informed of the refugees' new arrangements, sings your praises as well. As an expression of our gratitude, we will endeavor to answer your questions as fully and openly as we are able. Then let us begin. First, it is the Forum's objective to ferry the life and knowledge of this star to the moon. Am I correct? You are. It is for this purpose that Charlian has labored these many long years. We have collected biological samples and scientific records from across the star. When the time comes, they will be moved from their places in Labyrinthos and Numenon and conveyed to safety. Once that critical task has been accomplished, we will begin transporting the Charlian citizenry, which has been categorized into groups. The earliest arrivals are to ensure hospitable environs for those who come after. Following our people, we will send those of other nations in turn, beginning with our allies. Radzat Han was foremost among these. But since the final days have already come to Thavnir, we saw fit to include the refugees with earlier groupings. An ambitious plan. You have accounted for the safety of all nations and tribes, then? As many as we can. And how, pray tell, do you decide who to leave behind? To journey beyond the sky is an unprecedented and immeasurably difficult endeavor. Introducing sources of inevitable conflict would condemn all to certain death. 
and you get to decide that. Questions as to the validity of that approach aside, are your plans proceeding apace? We're under the impression that your primary means of celestial transportation is incomplete. If only in that it does not meet our optimal parameters, that is correct. This arc, as some have taken to calling it, is fully operational and could be launched even today. However, the final days have progressed more quickly than we anticipated. At present, the ship is incapable of attaining speeds sufficient to meet our evacuation targets. Should we put the vessel into service, as it is now, we will be unable to travel to the moon and back quickly enough to complete the necessary number of trips. Precious lives and knowledge will be lost. Seven hells. Is there anything to be done? Mm hmm. The ether burner, the primary means of propulsion once the craft is in the space between stars, is undergoing testing to determine whether it can be made more efficient. Though cargo is being loaded for the initial phase of the exodus, we are prepared to continue our experimentation up to the day before launch, should it prove necessary. Okay. What if the Scions were to solve your problem? <laughs> we shall help devise a means to improve the ether burner's efficiency on two conditions. If we succeed, you must allow us to meet with Hydaelyn. Hmm. Okay. Twas simple enough to deduce. <laughs> you have a Concord, and so you would never have abandoned the Anti-Tower had you no other means of communication. One far more convenient, I suspect. The second condition, also to be met upon our success, is that we be permitted to propose another use for your Ark. Oh, man. What are we going to do? Find Medion. Oh, silly. obviously. Yeah. <laughs> we would be at liberty to refuse this proposal. Of course. If we cannot prove its merit to the 99 here, who are we to stake on it the lives of all peoples of this star? True now. <laughs> Delightful as always, Master Alfida. <laughs> <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> oh, we couldn't have asked for a finer plan. Allow us to solve this complex engineering problem of which we were entirely unaware until moments ago. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> the satire writes itself. Jeez. You don't know us, bro. <laughs> Yet, what field has not benefited from a change in perspective? When we are at wit's end, what we need is not the same dry theories recited ad nauseam, but fresh inspiration. I, for one, have faith in my erstwhile students to provide it. And okay. I find their terms to be perfectly acceptable. Okay. What just happened? Order, order! We have no time to waste <laughs> on debate. I call a vote. Hmm. All in favor of agreeing to the Scion's terms? Aye. Everyone's hands should be going up. Y'all don't know how to fix the problem. Hmm. Oh? <laughs> 71 in favor, 28 against. The eyes have it. But not the nose. 
For Cheneau, as the architect of this project, you are the best candidate to show them its current state. And bear in mind that regardless of your personal misgivings, this is the will of the Forum. Oh, he did not vote for it. Very well. Hmm. Well, Call this session to a close. Return to your tasks with urgency. The final days wait for none. All right. So we got the dude, the biggest chore ever. <laughs> the chores aren't done. Could swap them out. No, been there, done that. Down there, lost nice. my eyebrows. Think, Coco, think. We'd Coco. be well on our way to paradise. Visionaries patting themselves on the backs for their grand accomplishments if you'd only think. Uh, yes, that does sound rather lovely. Yeah! <laughs> I mean, Master Force, you know, what a pleasant surprise. <gasps> We're not blasting off already, are we? The schedule remains unchanged, for better or worse. Which is why the Forum has elected to accept assistance in resolving the ether burner conundrum. Huh. Not seen you lot down here before. There are Archons among their number, but engineering is not their expertise. Nevertheless, the Forum concedes the slim possibility that they may have insights to offer. If not, you are at liberty to return them to the surface. By whatever means <laughs> you see fit. I assure you that won't be necessary. Now, about your troubles with the ether burner. Aye, aye, I'll walk you through it. Suppose I could do with a change of pace. As the name ought to tell you, the ether burner burns ether ambient or otherwise, and transforms it into motive force. Wow. Think of it like a giant bomb that never stops exploding. Like mm, fission, fusion. Like, is it fusion or fission? It's fusion. Oh. Even out in that black void where the ether's right sparse, it's strong enough to move our arc. <laughs> and it probably won't kill you like an actual bomb. <sighs> but it ain't. Perfect. According to my calculations, to travel to the moon and back fast enough for the forum's liking, the conversion rate needs to be 6% more efficient. Wow, 6% A measly 6%, you say? But if I could have squeezed even another 0.6 out of it, don't you think I'd have built it that way in the first place? Hast thou consulted with the Loperits? Yes. Yes, they too are conducting their own research, for lack of a ready answer. The moon's propulsion systems are considerable, naturally, yet they are commensurately massive. It is no easy feat to convert their technology into an efficient means of propulsion for a teeny tiny toy boat, as they say, <laughs> and as I most certainly do not. My gosh. Yes, exactly! <laughs> Damn it all, oh, I asked for a fine adamantite and they send me uppity rabbits with inscrutable, ancient, incompatible technology. You're trying to drive me mad. <laughs> refined adamantite. Do you speak of elegant refined adamantite, perchance? I know some. There's some you in the tower. It. Duh. Only in the most general terms, I'm afraid. Twas an alloy of Allegan make, but the secrets of its production were closely guarded. As I recall, the record stated it was vital to Dalamud's construction and launch. Oi, that's the stuff. No material more conductive far as I know. Slotting some ends like blowing up a dam and watching the river of Aoife come rushing through. I ain't a living soul that knows how to make it though. We were fortunate enough to salvage some for the ether burner, just a wee bit, mind, from a chunk of Dalamud that came hurtling into the northern empty during the calamity. We have more. Well, that extra 6% efficiency will be child's play. 
It's a crying shame that we've no other sources. Surely the many shards of Dalamud scattered throughout Eorzea would suffice. Why not get the refined adamantite from them? Oh, <laughs> we tried, believe you me. But only a few specialised pieces would have had any in them to begin with. Drive calls from Ragnarok class internment hulks. Those are the prize bits we really need. According to the gleaners, getting to them means delving deep into the shards. And the defences are still very operational and very eager to blow them up. It's rough going in there, even for the cream. I'm sure they'd make it out alive. Even for the cream? What's <laughs> that even mean? <laughs> like the cream of the crop? Oh, I guess. Is that what he means? Weren't we near that part of the Ragnarok when we went to destroy Bahamut? Hey, hey. That wasn't required content. That was optional content. But we did. We were there. <laughs> you want me to go and fetch the Watsits? The Watsits? <laughs> Oh, the white ravens. <laughs> the white ravens goes. This sounds like a job for someone else. <laughs> what you want to say? You want me to go and fetch the whatsets? We'll fetch the whatsets for you. That may be for the best, though you doubtless find the task too dull for your liking. <laughs> Chores are my middle name, mm -hmm. man. Yeah. There are multiple internment hulks in Eorzea alone, so handling this ourselves may not be the most efficient option. Rather, if we could salvage adamantite from the shards simultaneously... Yeah, it's just cast it. Thancred, is the link shell we established before you went to Garlemald still active? Of course. The floor is yours. Oh, they don't just keep it in their ear at all times. What's all this? Gathering firewood, so to speak. Yes. We alone can accomplish little. But joined by others, we may yet build a bonfire to carry us heaven's ward. Oh, shoot. Oh, man. He said the thing, guys. He said the thing. He said the thing. He said the thing. That was a thing. That was a thing. He's. He also got got trained to to pick up firewood by um estinian uh. that's, that's why he re <laughs> no no like for, that, that's, no, that's why he's no, that's referring true. to yeah, that. yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is alphano the scions have need of you oh yeah understood i will contact the lord commander and dispatch our finest at once my sisters are somewhat preoccupied with the final days. So I will lead the Twelveswood expedition myself. Oh, wow. Okay. Are you aware of any other sources of refined adamantite? Logically, such an invaluable alloy would have been utilized solely where absolutely necessary, in components intended to conduct or collect surpassing amounts of ether. Any extant instrumentation or devices would have likely found their way into the hands of etherologists or enthusiasts. Teamwork, friends, family, and love fixes everything, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Magical artifacts of Allegan design? The Eastern Alliance will send word to one and all. Are there other ways we may offer aid? No shards of the Lesser Moon scar our soil, but our stake in this cause is no less for it. You know Serena's? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. She's the mole. <laughs> is there anything in Offered that might be of use to you? <laughs> That's funny. What did you say? Oh, you got friends in far places, lad. Yes. Yeah, we do. Any road, 
If you're offering, I wouldn't say no to one of those Far Eastern sacred relics. Some of them can hold enough ether to summon a whole damn primal. They do, because we've fucked them. Like that with the ether burner, and three, two, one, kaboom! I gather you heard his explosive enthusiasm. Might you secure us a suitable relic? Yeah, right. <laughs> it shall be done. I know little of machines, but I promise we will do our utmost to gather the materials you need to finish your starship. Starship. We're going to become starship troopers. I am glad for the work, in truth. Better to busy oneself than wait and fret over disasters foretold. Then why are we all still standing about yapping this plunder for the taking? And I'm a born plunderer. Oh, sicker. I'll be an old Charlian before you know it. Start mixing the grog. <laughs> Great. I'm certain that can be arranged. Thank you all, and do be careful. Just like that. Just like that. I. Just like that. Our refined adamantite is on its way. Nice. Now let us consider our next steps, shall we? There's yet much to be done. It's like he's done this before in a previous world where we had to protect the entire world by having everybody come together. Meanwhile, in all that. Uh oh. Uh oh. The spare is coming to all that. I was just asking about them. Our course of action is clear. We must harvest refined adamantite from the shards of Dalamud and procure arcane relics of Allegan Make. Summon the best and brightest of our immortal flames and form an expeditionary party at once. Call upon the Sultan Sworn and Brass Blades for support as you must. Papashan, send word to the guilds. We will require the expertise of master artisans if we are to have any hope of identifying and recovering these elusive materials. She sounds kind of different, no? I was just about to say, did they get a new VA for Nenemo? Yeah, I guess we just haven't heard her in a while. But she sounds different. Uh, she sounds different, man. Yeah. I bet Bajik Fear would guys, know. we have need of your stone torches. Fear guys. What a great name. I would have said fire guys. They are to assist the immortal flames in scouring the ruins and to help secure the surrounding areas. I trust I can count on your support. As commander of the Stone Torches, my son Zimberk will personally see it done. Pippin, I would have you lead the raiding party. Assemble your finest, and with Tizona's blade, clear the way. Lord Lolorito, I pray you take charge of the search for Alagon relics. Surely you know of some being traded on open or clandestine markets, or sleeping in collector's vaults. Yeah, I think it's just been a while. She just we haven't heard any of the leaders really speak to Handwalker. And like early in the beginning we did. I don't think she even talked. Of course, I ask not that you do this out of the kindness of your heart. By all means, profit on the transactions. I wish you the joy of it. <laughs> Final days descend upon our world. If circumstances are truly as dire as they say, Uldar's best efforts may be for naught. And yet, when we Eorzeans rose from the ashes to rebuild our broken realm, did we not learn one simple truth? That which seems all but impossible to overcome alone may yet be possible if we stand together. Yes. Teamwork. It was the Scions who united us then, and it is the Scions who call upon us now. 
Uldha will answer that call. We will summon our courage and join the fight for our world's future. You know your duties. I, Nanamo Ulnamo, 17th in the line of all, bid you good luck and good speed. I thought she was going to say, Nanamo, out! <laughs> Black shot. Oh, so okay. See, I was just asking about them. Now they're just gonna show all of them because I'm like, oh, we haven't seen them in a while. Why are they saying anything? <laughs> oh. We fielded a goodly number, but our ranks are heavy with healers, and an abundance of restorative magics will be of little help in destroying Dalamud's defenses. Still, it has ever been thus with Gridania. We must steel ourselves for a protracted engagement. Oh, oh, Lise. In that case, might I suggest taking us along? How did you know? <laughs> Commander Hext, what are you doing here? None of the shards in Girabania are big enough to hold an internment hulk. So we said to ourselves, why not lend our neighbors a hand? We thought you might be short on people with a talent for breaking things. <laughs> <laughs> While it pains me to admit it, you are right. Our artificiency is so plain to see. It might have been a lifetime ago, but I was once one of the Scions assigned to the Shroud. With Papa I know Limo. this forest well. I know your people. And I know we will be stronger if we fight this fight together. Then I will impose upon you with a clear conscience. Come. Let us speak of how to integrate our forces. Wow. I won't let it all be for nothing. I promise you, Papalima. I'm just calling these out before they're happy. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Kirthus. Oh, it must be the uh, Emmerichs. Oh, is he in Orshafon's Schmerk? Yes. There! There you are! We've no time to waste, brother. Everyone has already... <laughs> oh, it's his crack shield. Meanwhile. Oh yeah. That's our samurai. And so, in summation, the Eastern Alliance, as well as the Honorable Lord Lollarito himself, reached out to me for assistance in procuring these treasures of the divine. And I, in turn, do beseech the Confederacy for aid. 
Guys, the world is ending. You don't even have to think about it. Right. It's like... Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Is that... Is that a Ninja Turtle friend? Hancock? What a surprise this is. Oh, he's got his, uh, his gear. And a fortuitous one at that. I have a favor to ask, you see. He has really long arms. Hey, man. That was it. Oh yeah, we got this background music now. Lively, isn't it? The town is a buzz. Everyone eager to meet with our friends from the moon. It would behoove you to consult with Sleeping Way. <laughs> As our moon's pilot, his advice should be most pertinent. <laughs> I'm impressed. Truth be told, I struggle to tell one from another. No offense intended, of course. I mean, they kind of... They kind of show who they are by what they do, right? Like, like the dwarves. None taken. After you and your friends left Mare Lementorum, we spent no small amount of time with your Uriange. Oh, the conversations we had. He told us all about Atheris, answered our every question, no matter how trifling or trivial. Look! Every page filled to the margins with knowledge. Wow. <laughs> when I first arrived, I was struck by how little I knew. It was daunting. But then I realized that were it not for Uriange and his teachings, we'd still be stuck on the moon, gazing at your world and wondering what we've been missing. <laughs> Instrumental, as always. What would they think if they could see Uriange now? I dare say they'd be more than a bit surprised. And impressed, no doubt. Master Louisois, Minfilia, Papalimo, and not to forget. It's her parents. Oh there. Heard there was a visiting expert who we might bother with a few questions. I take it you'd be the one. Yeah, yes, I am. Is that? It's her parents. Wilson and Blavida, hmm. Charlian's foremost researchers in the field of teleportation magic and Moonbreeder's parents. Hmm. It, it hath been some time. Tis... Tis good to see you in... Uh, good health. Likewise, old friend. Blavida and I were most honored to answer the call. Never expected this reunion, though, did we, dear? I'll say, the nerve. Sending that letter, then running off to the gods know where. Do you have any idea how worried we were? <laughs> I... I'm sorry. 
T'was remiss of me not to deliver the news in person. No, more than that. T'was I who... Our daughter was disillusioned after Master Louisois left her behind. The day the Scions called upon her was the happiest I'd seen her in years. She made her every choice of her own free will. No one could have ever forced her to do otherwise. Don't blame yourself for her death. Celebrate her life. You know that's what she'd want. If there is one thing we resent you for, it was that we could not be there to mourn her with you. Reading the words you penned in that shaky hand, we must have cried as much for you as we did for her. I'm sorry. I truly, truly am. I knew not what to say. Knew not how to express my feelings. The poems and platitudes of wiser men, musings on sadness and loss, studied and memorized, and meaningless in the moment. Silly boy. We are all powerless before such grief. Even now, try as I might, the words escape me. But in our hearts, we know, we always know. Ninjas. Ninjas around here. I remember when you were young. How the lads teased you for choosing the company of books over others. Our moon didn't take kindly to that. Be nice to Orionje, she'd shout, and give them a walloping. No matter how many times we scolded her. I just have an itchy eye. Somebody so we onions. offered a suggestion. <laughs> Rather than starting fights, why don't you be the bridge between Orionje and the others? She had to mull it over for a while, arms crossed, brow furrowed in intense thought. But from that day on, she never let you be alone. She'd drag you outside to play, pepper you with endless questions, read the same books you read, all to try and understand you that much better. I'm sure it was annoying and exhausting at the time, but she only ever had the best of intentions. And look at you now, at the center of the crowd. The reason there even is a crowd, having brought these people together. You've no idea how proud we are. To see the boy, our daughter trusted and believed in more than anyone, grow into the man she always knew he could be. I can see her in you too. Feel her. She walks with you wheresoever you go. So thank you, Orianger, for being who you are. I'm not crying, you're crying. I'm not crying. <laughs> you're definitely crying. I... I think... I can feel her too. The truth of her life. Not sorrow, but hope and love. You could ask the man himself. Oh, no, no. But what 
watching this exchange reminds me how much I've yet to learn about your world. And its people. You can live here your entire life and hardly learn a thing. Some people do. Mm. And that's why it's too soon for this to end. All set, I take it. All set. We finished what we could, delivered supplies, tracked down escaped animals, trivial tasks as they may be. Yeah, join the club. Hmm. That's enough, don't you think? If there was anything more important still undone, that would be a problem in itself. The vessel is essentially ready for departure. All that remains is to load the final batch of supplies and see everyone on board. Once we've readied the ether burner, that is. Ah, had a feeling we might find you all here. Our consultations with the Loperates, too, have run their course. Pleased I am to say that our researchers' concerns have for the most part been allayed though some insist on making adjustments to the very end. For their part, Living Way and her peers have graciously offered to stay and keep the people company, lest any lingering queries go unanswered. All that remains is to wait for the refined adamantite. There it is. Alphano, are you there? It's me, Kryle. Hi, Kryle. Your special delivery has arrived. Round up everyone and come to the harbor at once. I, I Speak of the devil. Let us go at once. Forgive the intrusion, Master Fortuna. I bring urgent news. A great commotion has broken out in Scholar's Harbor. Your presence is requested with all speed. The Adamantite has arrived. Now, where might this delivery be? <laughs> where the crowd is. Oh. <laughs> Oh. Oh. <laughs> and with more in the ship. Oh, there's a flying one. I'm sure it's very important, but we cannot accept these without the proper permits. By the twelve? Surely, these can't all be. Is the flying ship one the one that was for the, um... Theater one? It looked like it was a theater one. Bleeding hellfire! They're bringing them by sea and by air! All these folks in these crates! And more on the way. You've got your adamantite right here. A bigger haul than any of these sorry bastards brought, and that's no lie! <laughs> Dang. <laughs> Yes, because you were charged with seeing the shipments from Gridania and Uldar here, along with your own. Give credit where credit is due. <laughs> oh, Emanolin. Sounds like the sorry whinging of a sore loser. An hypocrite to boot. Ain't no way a scrawny whelp like you took a dozen steps inside a Dalaman shard. <laughs> I'll have Jeez. you know I went all the way to the entrance. I played a vital role in keeping a lookout whilst our expeditionary forces secured the adamantite. <laughs> Left you outside so you wouldn't get anyone killed, did they? Well then, credit where credit's due, you did a right fine job sitting on your ass. <laughs> Take that back. Make me. I will not stick to your level. Oh, 
My, what a grand welcome party! Hopefully he's still practicing his breathing technique. We come bearing relics both sacred and elegant, as well as a few other gifts that may be of help, to be presented with best wishes from the Eastern Alliance. Nice. Very good. I myself have come with a sacred relic of the Kojin. Upon learning of your need, Bunchin bade me deliver it on behalf of the Blue with all haste. With all haste. Oh, hold on. Uh, I am behind. Go ahead. Go ahead. Fearing I could not swim here with the necessary speed, however, I thought to beg our Confederate allies for aid. To my delight, Hancock was already preparing for departure at the self-same port, and had space for additional cargo. We did, of course, need quite the impressive vessel to get it all here in time. That is all wonderful to hear, but what of the extraordinary cost? I shudder to think of the ransom we must pay for such a bounty. <laughs> Fret not for your coin purse, young Alfano. <laughs> Lord Lollarito looks ever towards the profits of the future, and thus the East Aldenar Trading Company went to some lengths to reduce the financial liability. And since the Scions funded the entire venture, not a gill need be rendered up in compensation. Everything is already yours. We funded the venture. When? <laughs> Don't let the name fool you. This coin keeper knows a thing or two about spending. Oh, it's a tarot. <laughs> when it comes to capital <laughs> investiture, a sprinkling of gill here and there will not do. You need enough savings to make waves when it really counts, which is why frugality is paramount. So the, the stuff on my... I was trying to sync them up. The stuff on my screen is different. They were talking about different things because I actually did the, the, the ship they're talking about in the sky. Oh. Yeah. I did the, the theater and all that stuff. So I was like, what is going on? Okay, so I, I am now caught up. The things on my screen were completely... You got different. more. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. I'll catch up. We also had the benefit of a generous patron. Generous being rather an understatement. She has supported us from the shadows since the very founding of the Scions. Eh, we even had coffers to fill. Mother. Oh. That's very Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, Dad's not pleased. I remain, of course, an entirely neutral party. I simply <laughs> thought our family's coffers were needlessly full. <laughs> Did you just use all of our savings? <laughs> we can hardly take them with us on your teeny tiny toy boat, now can we? <laughs> <laughs> and would be a shame to leave all that hard-earned wealth unspent. <laughs> Waste not! not. <laughs> what just happened? However did you manage so much in so short a time? We expected word to reach only a fraction of our allies. Did I not tell you I have my ways? Hey, it's him again. Erinville! You were involved too! I received a letter from Cryo after we parted ways in Labyrinthus. She explained what the science were trying to accomplish, and why you might soon require the services of the cleaners, spread across the world as we are. I pray you do not interpret this as a betrayal of Charlie. 
I accept that the forum's aim in pushing us to our limits was to preserve what knowledge we have, and I bear you no ill will for it. Yet, in collecting that knowledge, what I came to appreciate most about our star is that there remains so much we do not know. That is why I chose to help the Scions, to combat the obliteration of those countless, undiscovered wonders. I held no illusions that they would be less demanding taskmasters. Though, rest assured, if I had, I would have been sorely disappointed. You are fired from your job. To make a long story short, <laughs> the whole of the guildship cooperated to ensure your call was heard far and wide. Hey! Yeah. Been wondering where you were, Sid and friends. What's this hey, about Alpha. a ship that can fly to the moon? Alpha's there. And why didn't you mention it sooner? The one time you don't beg my aid, your problem's a bloody ship that can fly to the moon. <laughs> That's what I said. See it. You brought the tea. <laughs> of course, Garland Ironworks finest. You need only point us towards my Look, new favorite Alpha. ship. Yeah. This is great. As you like as not suspect, we've also brought Adamantite for Mordona's Dalamud Shard. I admit to some consternation upon first receiving Kral's message. So few Scions remain at the Rising Stones now. Far too few for such an expedition. However, the Gleaners were able to secure us reinforcements. Idleshire's treasure hunters, not least among them. Is it Idleshire? Have we just been saying Idleshire wrong this entire time? <laughs> I think it's just his accent. Oh, uh, okay. Oh no. Ah, the gobby frock fault. Slowfix's gratitude for the safe return of his daughter has not waned, and he gathered his kin to our side with an astounding quickness. The clash between their machina and the elegant defenses was a sight to behold. I wager, even you would have been impressed by the magnitude of the gobby booms. The gobby booms. <laughs> Fascinating as all this is, I fail to see how it explains your presence here. Does Razat Han not have more pressing concerns? We do. Yet averting the final days would be the most expedient solution. That, and I am indebted to you. Oh, wow. big deal. Though they chose to take their leave of Thavnir, those you saved in Galimund remain my people. My gratitude is beyond words. It is appropriate that I aid you in kind. If in the doing we bring salvation to others of this star, so much the better. Okay. You will recall that I spoke of my father, Midgard Sumur, and his journey across the great expanse. As he traveled betwixt the stars, his resplendent scales drank of the ether in those nigh empty surrounds and imparted to him the strength to persevere. Thinking they might further your cause, I called uh -oh. out to my kin for consent. Which kin? Uh -oh. Sibling? Yeah. Ashdaya's answer was silence, as ever. Tiamat and Chris Velgre, however, responded favorably to the suggestion. Oh, so have, we haven't seen this as Daya, but... Or I have. I haven't. Maybe it was from somewhere else? My sire, too, stirred from his slumber long enough to speak and say, Very well. Oh, Midgar Somer said it. Thus have I brought you his own worm scales. Fit them to your purpose, and seek a worthier fate for us all. Okay, good. You'd be hard-pressed to find someone else so familiar with the unique properties of dragon scales. So I invited myself along. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> but 
Look at me. This is so unbelievable. I've gone right back round to believing it again. It's <laughs> <laughs> fantastic. What a great line. If we get a 6% gain out of efficiency, with all these goodies, we could get 7. No, 10. No, 14 bleeding percent. <gasps> <laughs> Think of how far we could go! What we could do with that much power! What we could blow up! <laughs> oh my gosh. Great. If Kokol is duly convinced, then it must be true. In which case, the science end of the bargain has been fulfilled. Would you not agree? Quite right. Do what you want. How is yes, her hair whiter than his? I think it's my mom's. Oh. I know not what you seek of Hydaelyn, nor for what purpose you would take command of our ship. Yet this much is certain. To do so will be to dictate the fate of this star and the lives upon it. Mm. The lives of each and every creature, in their magnitude and their fragility. Do you understand? And are you prepared? Yes. Absolutely. We have seen and we have felt how much each life shapes this world. Mm. And so we are determined to abandon none. We understand what is at stake. And we are prepared to bear this burden. Mm. Eloquent. <sighs> then I... I will bear it with you. I beg you, share your struggles with me. As family. Mm. Where you been, Da? You grasped my fingers with such tiny hands the day you were born. I thought my heart might burst. It was love and happiness beyond expression. Overwhelming. And a conviction so powerful that I trembled with something close to rage. I had heard the final days foretold. I swore to myself then and there that I would not let them steal your futures. The great exodus would succeed, must succeed. No sacrifice or sin was worse than the alternative. If anything gave me pause, it was mine own father. The Archon Louisois openly decried Charlien's policies, a perspective which I regarded with increasing disdain as I grew older. Yet even as part of me thought him a fool, perhaps I also hoped that he, of all people, would devise a brilliant means to save my children. A naive hope, but stubborn enough that I could never bring myself to keep you apart. No, that was his doing, when he perished at Cartano. As we pulled that twisted slab of Dalamud from the sea, I remembered the warmth of your newborn touch. Chastened, I vowed never again to suffer any interference in my mission to protect you. No matter that you yourselves wished otherwise. Detest me, fight me tooth and nail. I would suffer it, and more, and be satisfied so long as I could force you onto the ship. <laughs> I was wrong. 
You two have grown so much stronger and so much wiser than I dared dream. You have earned the right to walk your own path and already begun to do so. Mm. Yeah. Good. Because there are things we care about and people we love and none of them is replaceable. Not a one. It cannot have been an easy journey for you to have come so far. We shall be glad to acquaint you with the finer details someday, once this danger has passed. All that we have seen and heard, that we have felt and learned in our travels. Ours is not a kind world, but it is beautiful. Always. Oh no. Are you quite sure that's wise? After all, someone turns pale and flees the room when he sees so much as an envelope containing word of your adventures. <laughs> Whatever will happen if he learns what you were really up to. <laughs> A millions. I have wronged my children most gravely. I owe you an apology as well. I assume that it was the Scion's influence that made them so keen to charge headlong into danger. Yours in particular. I see now that said influence instead brought them together with the many fine people gathered here today. In which case, I hope you continue to guide them. If we finish loitering about the harbor, might I suggest we put our plans into motion? People are beginning to look confused. Perhaps you can spare a few words <laughs> ere they resume the tedious lugging of cargo. You have no small number of friends and admirers here, after all. Are you telling me to make a speech? Speech. Speech. <laughs> what do we say, wifey? Our moment of triumph is close at hand. Your assistance is appreciated. Now, in an orderly fashion, if you please. <laughs> stay in line. If you're here, stay in line. And that's it for Final Fantasy. Click that video before Lego falls asleep. <laughs>